Hi everyone. In this video, Anatomy, Pathophysiology, Clinical Features and Diagnosis of Tetralogy of Fallow will be discussed. Tetralogy of Fallow is the most common synoptic congenital heart disease. Let's first see the normal circulation as shown in the animation. The Tetralogy of Fallow has four major features, namely a large ventricular septal defect, right ventricular outflow tract obstruction, overriding of aorta, and right ventricular hypertrophy. The right ventricular hypertrophy is the response to ventricular septal defect and right ventricular outflow tract obstruction. It should be noted that the VSD is mal aligned, that is, the margins of the VSD are in different planes, as shown. All the features can be attributed to a single embryological abnormality as proposed by Von Pra, and it was called monology of Stenson. The single abnormality is the anterior and cephalate displacement of the infundibular septum. To understand this, one has to remember the development of the interventricular septum, as discussed in the previous video. For the ease of understanding, let's recap the development quickly. Ventricular septum develops as three parts, namely muscular, membranous, and the infundibular. The space above the membranous septum is called interventricular foramen. It is closed by the development of infundibular septum. In the monology concept, the infundibular septum moves anterior and in the cephalic direction, so that it cannot join the membranous septum to close the interventricular foramen. Thus, there is a persistent interventricular foramen, which we call as ventricular septal defect. As the infundibular and membranous septum are in different planes, the VSD is called mal-aligned, and the VSD is also large and non-restrictive. So, the VSD in TOF or tetralogy of fallow is a perimembranous defect with extension into the subpulmonary area. Due to the anterior and cephalate displacement of the infundibular septum, there is narrowing of the right ventricular outflow tract, causing RV body obstruction. As the infundibular septum is displaced anteriorly, the aortic root is also displaced along with it, causing overriding of the aorta over the interventricular septum. Thus, aorta receives blood from both right and the left ventricles. And the last feature is the right ventricular hypertrophy. It is due to the right ventricular outflow tract obstruction and large VSD. Thus, this concept of monology explains all the four features of the TOF. The RVOT obstruction can be at multiple levels. Most commonly, the obstruction is at the level of infundibulum. Rarely, the obstruction is at the pulmonary valvular level, or it can be the combination of both. Or in severe cases, the pulmonary valve can be adritic. There can also be supravalvular narrowing in the main pulmonary artery or in the branch pulmonary arteries. The pathophysiological consequence of TOF is mainly due to the degree or the severity of the RVOT obstruction. As the VSD is large and non-restrictive, the right and left ventricular pressures are equal. So the direction of blood flow across the VSD depends on the path of least resistance for the blood to flow and it is not dependent on the size of the VSD. If the RVOT obstruction is less and the resistance to the blood flow across the RVOT is less than that of a systemic vascular resistance, that is the resistance of blood to flow into the iota, the blood of LV preferentially flows into RVOT causing predominantly left to right shunt. These patients don't develop cyanosis and they form the pink TOF. As the RVOT obstruction increases, the resistance of the blood flow across the RVOT also increases. So now the blood from the RV preferentially enters into the iota via the VSD. This causes right to left shunt of the blood and leads to cyanosis. So as the severity of RVOT obstruction increases, there is deepening of cyanosis. And due to chronic cyanosis, TOF patients develop polycythemia. The severity of RUT obstruction can fluctuate in TOF patients. That is, even in patients with mild cyanosis, they can develop profound cyanosis and dead spells when there is transient increase in the severity of 
RVOT obstruction. Clinical presentation varies according to the severity of RVOT obstruction. The hallmark clinical feature is cyanosis. If the RVOT obstruction is severe, as in top with pulmonary atresia, cyanosis is present immediately after birth. These babies don't develop heart failure. They become breathless on feeding. Dead spells are rare. Infants with moderate RVOT obstruction develop cyanosis after many weeks of birth. Dead spells are common. Cyanosis is often accompanied by squatting, which lessens the severity of the cyanosis. In case of mild RVOT obstruction, they are acyanotic. They develop mild cyanosis during exercise or crying. Dead spell doesn't occur. They develop cyanosis and breathlessness in the first or second decade of life due to progressive increase in RVOT obstruction with age. Physical examination reveals varying degree of cyanosis and clubbing. JVP is normal and the arterial pulse is normal. The precordium is quiet on inspection and silent on auscultation. The precordium is quiet because the right ventricle ejects blood into the iota via the large VSD rather than ejecting into the obstructed RVOT. First heart sound is normal, second heart sound is usually single because of the soft pulmonary component. An ejection click may be audible due to the dilated iota as both RV and LV ejects blood into the iota. The ejection systolic murmur in TOF is due to the RVOT obstruction and the murmur is not due to the presence of VSD. The ejection systolic murmur is crescendo-decrescendo type, best heard in the left parasternal region. As the RVOT obstruction increases, the murmur becomes softer and shorter. This is just opposite to the murmur in isolated pulmonary valvular stenosis. The reason is in TOF, as the RVOT obstruction increases, more blood is shunted into the iota via the VSD. So less blood flow across the RVOT. So the murmur becomes softer and shorter. In case of isolated pulmonary stenosis, as the obstruction increases, the murmur becomes longer and louder. As there is no VSD, the blood has to flow via the obstructed RVOT. Electrocardiogram shows right axis deviation, which is usually between 120 to 150 degrees. And features of right ventricular hypertrophy is present. That is dominant R wave in V1 that is more than 7 mm tall. There is early and abrupt transition to RS pattern in V2 due to the window effect of VSD. The LV forces are seen in the right precordial leads. Clockwise looping is present that is Q wave in lead 2, 3 and AVF. And Q wave an amplitude of R waves in lead V5 and V6 indicates the magnitude of pulmonary blood flow and of left ventricular filling. In classical TOF, there is absent Q wave and RS pattern. This denotes the LV is underfilled due to decreased pulmonary artery blood flow. In case of palliative shunt or development of collaterals, there is Q wave and tall R waves in V5 and V6. This denotes adequate or increased pulmonary blood flow and increased or adequate left ventricular filling. Chest X-ray shows normal heart size or smaller than normal. The heart shadow in the top is called boot-shaped heart. The top of the boot is formed by upward pointing cardiac apex, which is formed by the hypertrophied right ventricle. The narrow part of the boot is due to the concave main pulmonary artery segment. The concavity is due to the narrow infundibulum or the hypoplastic main pulmonary artery. This sign is accentuated by a large lung volume and a small thymus. When normal thymus is present, the left lobe of thymus may obscure the concave pulmonary artery sign. Other findings are oligemic lung fields. A right atrial arch can be seen as indentation on the right side of the trachea. Echocardiography is diagnostic. We can assess and measure the severity of all four features of TOF in echo. VSD morphology, a number of VSD can be assessed. Anatomy and severity of the level of RVOT obstruction can be measured. Coronary artery and iatric arch anatomy can be studied. Presence of any other associated cardiac anomalies can also be found. 
cardiac catheterization is done to find branch pulmonary artery stenosis or to study coronary artery anatomy and to identify and treat major iatopulmonary collateral arteries and also to find presence of any accessory VSDs. Similarly, CT angiography can be performed to study the branch pulmonary artery, coronary artery and major iatopulmonary collateral artery anatomy. Before completing the video, let us discuss on the difference between TOF and double outlet right ventricle with VSD and PS. It should be noted that the overheading of IATO and TOF is not more than 50%. If it is more than that, then DORV morphology is to be considered. And in DORV, there is also loss of IATO mitral continuity. It should also be noted that in DORV, the right axis deviation is more than that of TOF. That is, it's more than 150 degrees. And there is counterclockwise looping in DORV. In TOF, there is clockwise looping in ECG. We complete the video here. Hope it was useful. If you like this video, please do share it with your friends and colleagues. See you soon in the next video.